As you can see in this car park, this is a very big car. It looks like a tank. This is the BMW iX. I've had a chance to test drive the BMW iX for two days. These cars are rare breed in Singapore with less than 100 of these vehicles in our country. The base variant, the X-Drive 40, retails for 508,888 Singapore dollars. And this car that you see here is the Sport version, X-Drive 40 Sport, which costs an extra 10,000 Singapore dollars. What you get for it is the extra Sport trims you see over here as well as the interior and you get bigger tires. The tires are upgraded from 21 inch all the way up to 22 inch. These are really big tires. Now this car is really important in Singapore because BMW sells four times more cars than Tesla in Singapore. BMW is one of the top three car brands in our country. Interestingly, BMW is also one of the top three EV brands in Singapore. There are some months when BMW sells more EVs than Tesla. This is why BMW producing EVs like the iX is so important for our country's transition to sustainable energy. In this video, I'm going to share a review of the BMW iX from the perspective of someone who drives the Tesla a lot. Click subscribe to stay updated to more videos on EVs. Let's start with a tour of the car. The first thing everyone notices is this gigantic grille in front of the car. Because it's an EV, it's not a real grille. This is a fully plastic material. BMW says that this is a self-healing material. So if you scratch it, and this car was actually scratched before, earlier, it heals under the sun after a while. Now, I talk about frunks a lot on EVs. Unfortunately for the BMW iX, we cannot open the frunk. Only the service team can open it. The only thing we can open here is this badge. So you press the front button, it reveals space for us to put in the wiper fluid. And that's it. Now let's check out the side of the car. So you notice these black components here are part of the sport strip. That's what you pay the extra $10,000 for and you get this gigantic 22 inch wheels. I, me crouching next to it, you can see how huge they are. So I think it's a good design. People like the blue calipers. As we head back, these are the side mirrors. There are cameras down here to help us check our blind spot. And you'll see the blind spot indicators on the side windows as well. Now one thing I really like about this car is the door handle. So it doesn't protrude out. You actually put your hand inside and it opens like that. Really nice door handles. It's sounding very premium as you close it. On top of this car is a glass roof which we'll check out later when we go inside. It's a panoramic glass roof. Now behind me you notice that there's no charge port here because the charge port for BMWs are on the right. The rear right. Coming down here, the sport trim also gives you this clear indicator lights here. And in the back, we have the trunk. Now, because the trunk takes up the whole back, and to make sure that people can still see your hazard lights or indicator lights, there's an extra set of lights down here at the back of the car. The whole trunk space is 500 liters. So here's one potential downside about the car. If you're driving a smaller car like the BMW iX3, the trunk space is actually slightly larger at 510 liters. And if you come from a Tesla, if you're driving a Tesla Model Y, the trunk space is 850 liters, a lot bigger. So better in mind, you consider this car. Now you can put back the back seats to get a lot more space. So this thing here can be removed, but again, because it's not foldable, it may be harder for you to store it. There's extra hidden storage at the back. Down here, this is pretty deep. So you can put like small picnic chairs, foldable picnic chairs, small foldable tables here. Your charging cables can go in here as well. That, the trunk height is customizable in the front computer. You can't manually set it like a Tesla. For a Tesla, you just move it manually in your hand, you hold the button and it presets a new height. For the BMW iX, you're going to go in the front computer, which we're going to check out right now. So to close this, let's press the trunk button. And I'll see you in the front seats for an interior tour. Welcome to the interior of the BMW iX. As you come in, 
you are greeted by a very luxurious interior. And even for all passengers coming in, there are carbon fiber reinforced door panels at the side of each door. In this car, you can see that there are a lot of buttons. So if you're someone who likes buttons, please click the like button. It's a BMW logo in the middle of the steering wheel, this hexagon shaped steering wheel. The buttons on the left are for your cruise control, your driving assistance. The buttons on the right are for your media controls, your phone calls. In front of us, we have an island with two 14.5 inch touchscreens. Pretty big. And I think they're designed really well. It looks very well integrated with the dashboard. These two screens here, this is the driver's instrument panel. This one here would be your media controls. The good thing with this car is that it supports wireless Apple CarPlay. There are some EVs that still require a wired connection for your phone. But right now, my iPhone can roam freely while I get CarPlay support. So in here, you can see they got the base user interface, but this is Apple CarPlay. I've got maps and I can select all my different CarPlay apps. Works really well, messages, phone calls all come through nicely. On top of these two screens for the driver, you won't be able to see in the camera, but there's also a digital heads up display. It's really helpful in showing the current speed limit and also your current speed. Down, down here in the driver's side, you've got all these buttons for your windows, for your doors. You see crystal in this car. So these crystals help to adjust the seat. The door knob to open is this button here. So you press this button and the door opens and then you close. In an emergency, if the digital electronic docks doesn't work, you can actually use the manual release handles down here. The one with the car icon. At the side pockets, we can fit in one small water bottle. And as you come in the middle, you've got the hazard lights here. You've got very nicely designed air vents. More crystal in the center with the iDrive media controller. You've got the volume controller and crystal and also the gear selector and crystal. So as we navigate in this car, I'll just go in, I could use my Google Maps. One thing I noticed is that if I put my phone in the wireless charger, which is located down here, the phone still drains battery. So what I do is there are two high speed USB-C plugs in here and I just plug them in and I could plug my iPhone in there and my phone's always 100% at all times. The wood trim is really nice. This button allows us to see the car cameras. So this is a 360 degree view camera, which brands like Tesla, even the Model S and X don't have yet. So it's really handy features, especially for parking and navigating very tight spots. The crystal extends to the front passenger side. So you can see the seat adjustment in the front passenger as well. And on the right, you see the speakers, those are Harman Kardon speakers, really good speakers in this car. 4th center console has deep space to keep items. This is classic BMW, opens in the middle. There are two cup holders down here. My wife loves that, again, these cup holders are variable adjustment. So depending on the size of your cup, you just push it in and it locks it in and grips it really tightly. From the front, you can control the expensive glass roof. Right now, the glass roof is fully visible. You can see the trees above us. So in this front panel here, you can press this button to basically fade out so that others can't see in as well. Very handy feature if you're parking in an apartment, people looking down and you want some privacy. This will also automatically turn off when the car is in park mode so no one else can see your car. Here, up here, you've got lights as you use the sunshade. It closes, it turns on. Very handy. The whole interior feels very luxurious. The seats are big. There are no seat ventilation, but there are heated seats if you need them in a cold day. Talking about seats, let's check out the back seats. I'll see you behind. These are the back seats, same door handle as the front. Push them in and here, you can see the carbon fiber reinforced panels. Really beautiful as you head into the car. As you see me coming in, it's much easier to slide through because there's no transmission tunnel. This is a pure EV. 
on top of the place where there used to be a transmission tunnel, you now have more comfortable leg room or to put some extra bags if you want to. And here you've got the aircon vents as well as climate controls. So you've got seat heaters if you need them. Your bum will heat up, especially in Singapore. More useful in Europe. You can change your climate up and down. Handy. At the top, you get to enjoy the glass roof better for the rear passenger. Here you get two USB-C fast chargers on each seat for a total of four at the back. There's a special compartment here if you pull it down, you can add in attachments like a coat hanger or a food tray. If you don't need to use it, you can close it. Apart from these two aircon vents here, there are also aircon vents on the side over here. Speakers here, same door buttons, you press this button, it opens and closes and also same emergency handles to open the door if it doesn't work electronically. In the middle, as you pull this down with the, for the armrest, you also push this button to reveal two cup holders and you just bring them up to push it back in again. In here, I believe this is where you can actually pull down to bring the seat down as well. But we're not going to do that now. We push it in. I think there is a lot of space for my head. There's enough space for my legs. And while this the floor may be a little bit higher because of the EV batteries, it's not a major concern. I think this will be a pretty comfortable car for long road trips. Or if you're being chauffeured by someone, you know, you're some fancy CEO. Okay, now that we've checked out the car, let's go charge this car. This car has a maximum AC charging speed of 11 kilowatts and a max DC charging speed of 150 kilowatts. Let's go to the front seats and find a nearby charger. See you in front. We're back in the front seats and we're ready to head to a charger. So I turn on the SP app, which is my network of choice because they already have my credit card details. And I click on EV charging. You see all the nearby locations. Today we're going to pick Caltex Changi. It's got DC 100 fast charging and the two bays available. It's only 2km away at Changi Road. So clicking it once reveals the cost. I've got to pay 65 cents per kilowatt hour. And right now our state of charge, you look at the car, is at 52%, which gives us 211 kilometers of range. So I'm going to click on directions. We're going to open Apple Maps. Or if you prefer, to use Google Maps, you can go back to the SP app, click on the same thing, click directions, and click Google Maps. And let's click start. Head north. Then you hear that? Because north. of Apple CarPlay, everything's navigated. So what I do is I plug in my iPhone for full charge. I click on the home button. And I now have Google Maps available. So let's head right out. So to drive the car, once the car is in start, you shift down the gear selector to drive. You see the gear here, drive, and we are ready to go. Turn left, then turn right. Now this car does not have single pedal driving, so I still need to press the brake to slow down the car and come to a complete stop. Turn right. So the current signals are on the left stock, like most continental cars. And as we head up, do you notice how quiet this car is? The noise isolation on the BMW iX is the best I've experienced so far. And this is also the fanciest and most expensive car I've experienced in Singapore so far. So as I'm driving, as a driver, I can see the heads up display that shows the speed limit and my current speed. As we accelerate, you can hear a special EV sound created by Hans Zimmer. You can turn it off, of course. Some of my friends who try this car at me says, in the back, the suspension may feel a bit stiffer, but in the front, it feels really comfortable. 
After driving this car for the past two days, I feel that the steering accelerator is a bit light. You can adjust it to sport mode by clicking on the, the mode controls. So right now we are on the default mode. So as we stop, here's opportunity. You click on my modes. You can see later on in the console, you can change the different modes in here. Efficient, of course, if you want more range. Sport mode for sporty experience and you see the whole user interface changes to a bit more red. Everything looks a bit more sporty right now. You go back to modes, you go back to efficient. You can see a different design. And you can also go try. The last three are just purely aesthetic. It doesn't change the actual driving at all. So you click expressive. It looks like this. And for the driver, you get a seat massage. So I'm feeling a massage going on in my seats right now. And hear a little bit of a different sound in the car. Now this is a very big car. So it takes a while for me to get used to parking in tight corners. So if, I think most people who buy a BMW iX are not living in HDB, so you don't have to worry about HDB multi-story car park. But for me, I do think about the places I go to. I wouldn't want to go to old malls. I'm a bit more cautious. We're here at Caltex, but unfortunately, both bays are now taken by other EVs. When we first navigated here, there were two empty bays. But right now, they, both EVs probably just came. Our two DC 100 slots are taken, as you can see on our left. This happens. This is a reality. Once in a while, the EV chargers are full. And that's why it's really helpful to have a lot of EV chargers in Singapore. So you can see Caltex Changi is full right now. We're going to navigate to another nearby location. Let's try TechLink, which is also just two kilometers away. So we click on this. DC 50, 64 cents per kilowatt hour. And let's get the directions for Google Maps. Let's start navigating. 10 minute drive. Okay, it's time for us to find SP chargers. This car has a 70 kilowatt hour battery with a WLTP range of 425 kilometers. In my experience driving this, the real world range for me is around 380 kilometers, which is not bad. It's our first time in this car park and also a speed charger. But I think we just spotted the speed chargers on our right. So there we are. Four empty bays! like Nirvana. Okay, let's hit in. Okay, let's park, let's hit outside and see whether the cables can reach our charge port. Welcome to the SP charger. So our charge port is actually down here on the back right. And we're going to use the 50 kilowatt DC charger. This gun here. Now, you just have to push these two buttons to release the AC and DC. And then plug this in. Step one. Step two, we're going to scan the QR code. So we scan this QR code down here. So you can see over here on my phone that we've got everything linked in. 50 kilowatt DC charging, 65 cents per kilowatt hour, and let's start charging. It will take up to 30 seconds to activate. Okay, it's charging right now. So on this screen, which is going to be quite hard for you to see, about 48% state of charge. And it will take some time to show the kilowatt hour charging. So we're now charging at 43 kilowatts. You can also see it down here. You can see charging started on the app. And now I also got a pop-up notification from the BMW app. So it's show showing over here that it's charging. So 48% state of charge. It will take a bit of time to actually reach 100% state of charge. So we'll wait for this. Let's talk a little bit about my experience driving the car and wrap up this video together. So this has been a really enjoyable car to drive. It is a different style of driving for me because I'm used to single pedal driving. But I think if any of us who drove an ICE car before won't have any problem driving this car. As you can see in this car park, this is a very big car. 
it looks like a tank. So let me know what you think about this car and what questions you have. I'm here having a nice iced chai tea latte and in the comfort of a cafe with the BMW app, I can check our state of charge. It shows me very nicely, it's 74% state of charge. All the stats are listed here. It shows me when I started charging the car at 48% state of charge. It allows me to set my max charge date and it preconditions the car so that when I finish this drink, the car is ready to go with me. Well done BMW. Thumbs up to that. Here's my final verdict after test driving the BMW iX for two days. What I love about this car is that it's really well built. BMW has made a very luxurious car. This is actually the first BMW I've test driven. And I've got to say, spoil market for me. The second thing I love about the car is good app access and wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. And the third thing that's great is that it's actually really quiet. If you sit inside, you can't hear much road noise. There are things to improve, no car is perfect. I wish that it had blind spot cameras. So many EVs now have blind spot cameras with different implementation. The good thing with this car is that you can actually see the blind spot indicators on the side mirrors. But making better use of the cameras would be a nice ask. The other thing to add would be, in the future we hope that when BMW launches new flagship EVs, that we get access to the front and hopefully a little bit more trunk space. The last downside would be the price. At half a million dollars, this car is not for everyone. I think the best target audience would be existing BMW owners which is a very significant population in Singapore, especially X5 and X6 SUV owners. The best way to experience this car is to test drive it yourself. And you can actually find the link down in the video description to test drive this car. And also visit BMW showrooms across Singapore. I got this car from the Linky showroom by Eurocar Motors. So thank you so much to the team in Eurocars and also BMW Asia Pacific for allowing me to experience this vehicle. If you found this video useful, please click the like button. Hit subscribe to stay updated to more videos on EVs.